This morning I have the privilege of presenting um, some of our ongoing research from Eisenhower. Uh, neither myself nor any of the co-authors have any disclosures. So HMGB1 is a, is a nuclear binding protein. It's a member of the family of, of what's commonly referred to as the damn molecules or the damage associated molecular pattern family. So specifically HMGB1 has been associated with the sterile inflammatory response after trauma. So our goal in this study was to identify possible therapeutic options using an in vitro model with murine macrophage cells um, to effectively reduce the expression of inflammatory cytokines, specifically TNF alpha. So I'll start by briefly covering some of the literature that led us um, to, to focus on HMGB1. So in 09 in shock, um, Peltz et al. were evaluating the effects of mechanical trauma on HMGB1 levels. Um, they determined that subjects demonstrated significant increases of, of HMGB1 levels over controls within one hour of mechanical tra trauma with peaked levels at roughly two to six hours. The plasma le levels would remain elevated for up to 30, uh, 136 hours following their traumatic injury. Um, this is actually unique and, and different from the HMGB1 response we see after infection, uh, where we see the uh, insult um, peak days after the, uh, after the infectious insult. So this early elevation uh, makes HMGB1 an interesting uh, possible therapeutic target. So Cohen et al. also looked at this and uh, did some correlation between the HMGB1 levels after trauma and uh, clinical outcomes. And they published these results in critical care in 09. What they demonstrated was increasing initial HMGB1 levels were associated with increased injury severity scores and, base de and initial base deficits. Um, they also found an association between the level of HMGB1 and their and, um, and organ dysfunction manifested by either acute uh, renal failure, acute lung injury, or ventilator free days. So we uh, initially exposed our cell line to both LPS and multiple commercial sources of HMGB1. Um, looking at the commercial sources, uh, IBL and Chondrex uh, demonstrate much less viability than R&D. We felt the variability we saw with R&D made it uh, not a viable option for our studies. Um, however, with um, uh, Chondrex, there was concerns both in the literature and through the manufacturer for LPS contamination. So we tested with Polymix and B, confirmed um, that there, there was some level of uh, LPS contamination with uh, Chondrex. So we subsequently utilized IBL uh, for all our subsequent testing. Uh, on review of the literature and patent database, we focused on two main areas um, for HMGB1 signaling blockade. Uh, we start with antibodies directed um, at HMGB1 directly, and then we continued with commercially available TLR4 inhibitors. Uh, ours of choice was Takeda 242. It works by binding an um, intracellular cytosine on the transmembrane TLR4 receptor and uh, subsequently stops signaling. So uh, we initially tested two commercially available HMGB1 antibodies in the presence of HMGB1. Uh, we found an increase in cellular TNF-alpha exposure or expression uh, with antibody uh, exposure. We subsequently wanted to confirm that HMGB1 was, um, antibodies were effectively binding HMGB1 and were able to do that through additional ELISA testing. Um, in addition, we exposed the cell lines independent of HMGB1 just to the HMGB1 antibody and found increased TNF-alpha exposure over the controls. Um, this raised concerns in our eyes as uh, antibody as a potential therapeutic option. So next we move to our, our primary testing of the TLR4 inhibitor, Takeda-242. Uh, we initially tested Takeda-242 in the presence of uh, LPS signaling, and we found significant decreases in TNF-alpha expression with simultaneous Takeda-242 exposure. Next, we evaluated the effects of HMGB1 signaling uh, with, um, via TLR4 with Takeda 242 inhibition. Uh, with increasing Takeda 242 concentrations, we call, saw decreasing cellular expression of TNF alpha. So, uh, we had also looked at a number of um, intracellular um, uh, molecules to block the intercellular pathway. 
um, that had in the literature been reported to be very successful in stopping the uh, uh, expression of TNF alpha. However, in our hands, when we would look at the cells following that exposure, we often found uh, a high level of apoptosis of our cells. So we wanted to confirm that Takeda 242 uh, was not causing a similar response and that we were seeing this decrease just secondary to cellular apoptosis. So we looked at our cells under both a light and confocal microscope. Our controls uh, appeared healthy with multiple spreading cellular bodies and multiple cellular processes. And even in the exposure of Takeda 242, we saw no evidence of increased cellular apoptosis and similar cell counts between controls and experimental groups. Um, so we felt Takeda 242 had some potential as a therapeutic option and wanted to determine the relative duration of effectiveness. So what we did is we exposed the cells to Takeda 242 and then we performed a washout at two hours. And subsequently, uh, the cells were exposed to HMGB1. And what we saw is that uh, even after washout, the Takeda 242 had a long-lasting inhibition of cellular TNF-alpha expression in the setting of HMGB1. And this, again, points to it being a possible therapeutic option. Uh, over the course of multiple subsequent experiments, we performed dose response curves, uh, consistently noting decreasing TNF-alpha expression with increasing Takeda 242 concentration. And so when we averaged uh, all of our experimentation on the dose curves and normalized them for TNF-alpha expression, uh, we were able to uh, determine a relative reduction curve, which you can see. Uh, using this mathematically calculated curve, we were able to determine an uh, effective concentration at which 50% of the TNF-alpha expression was uh, suppressed. And it ended up being about 16 uh, nanomoles of Takeda 242. So in conclusion, um, despite in the literature there being multiple published possible therapeutic options, uh, in our hands we feel Takeda 242 has strong promise and uh, subsequent testing is planned. So. Uh, we're currently pursuing additional testing. Um, protocols are in active development. Um, interestingly, there's some, uh, Eritron, another um, TLR4 inhibitor, has already showed some promise in, in rat models. And we're hoping to um, use their model and, and test Takeda 242 as well. And I'll now take any questions. Any questions from the floor? Great work. I would say um, it looks like there's been similar studies, at least in China, using the same utility, so finding mm -hmm. the same findings. Um, they had looked at it in liver um, transplants for the animal model and their viability. So mm -hmm. what specifically is your intent now that you're seeing similar findings to move forward? I know you had a list there, but what's the next study? So sure. I think I think for us, uh, the, the group that did the Iridoron study had a really interesting model of polytrauma with hemorrhage. Um, uh, the difficulty is um, doing any more long-term follow-up with these animals. Um, in their study, the animals were sacrificed at six hours. And why we think Takeda 242 with this mechanism would yield similarly promising results, and that and that protocol is actively in development. Uh, we're, we're trying to figure out a model where we can keep these animals alive, um, continue to dose them, and see more long-term effects, like where they go on to develop weeks, um, days to weeks after exposure. Excellent work. Thank you. Thank you.